So we're going to be talking about AutoCAD today. Um, I'm going to give you a pre-warning. This is a pretty long tutorial. Uh, feel free to take breaks. We're going to start off by going over some of the interface. We're going to work on scaling a reference image. We're going to work on actual drafting um, of a plan. Um, we're going to work on drafting an elevation based on that plan. And then we might get to adding site context. I might leave that for another session. Um, so to start out with, you need AutoCAD itself. Um, your first option is to download it from the Autodesk Education website. You can sign in here with your MICA email and it'll give you access to most of their programs for three years. You're either using AutoCAD or AutoCAD for Mac and you'd wanna download the 2020 version. Um, the other way to do it is to log into MICA's VPN, which is what I'm going to do. I think that's a little bit easier for me rather than keeping track of the programs. Um, so what we are working on drafting today is this retail space. So I just looked this up on LoopNet. Um, I'm imagining that the businesses that you will be representing maybe originally had a space similar to this and they're going to be working on moving their space outdoors onto the sidewalk um, to help improve COVID um, regulations. So what's nice about this is it comes, they have a plan here, but um, it doesn't have a scale on there. Um, it's not something you can really plan with yet because we don't have it in an editable format. So we're going to be using this to create our plan that then we can um, use for planning purposes. Um, there's no elevation provided. So we're going to look at this elevation, just the photograph and create our elevation based on that. So that's the basis, basic premise of what we're working on today. So to start out with, um, I'm going to get into my remote desktop over here. Reminder that you're supposed to, you sign into the VPN first, you sign to Cisco first, then you sign into remote desktop. Make sure to use the computer that is assigned to you on Canvas. Um, I have downloaded my AutoCAD tutorial files here. Those are my reference files, so you should be able to find those on Canvas. And here is my AutoCAD 2020 that I'm going to open up. It's going to take a minute. Um, I'm not going to restore this. Okay, so you're going to click on start drawing. Once we get here, first thing you want to do is set your units. In AutoCAD, you draw at one to one scale. Um, we will only be using AutoCAD for 2D drawing. There will be no 3D work in AutoCAD. Um, but everything you draw, like if you want something that's a foot long, you make it, you draw it a foot long. Um, then we'll work on annotating and making things at a scale later. But for now, everything is one to one. So I'm going to type in units and that'll make sure that I'm drawing in the units that I want to be drawing in. So I'm going to change length to architectural um, and I'm going to do, so here where it says insertion scale, rather than put in inches, um, I'm going to change this to unit list. And it's gonna hate that I'm doing that, hit continue. The reason I want to do that is because um, it allows me to type in three feet, three inches. If I just have it set at inches, I'd have to do the math in my head and um, put in 39 inches, which I hate doing math in my head. I'd rather just have it unitless so I can either write it in feet, write it in inches, write it in either. Um, the trick is if I put in unitless, then I need to specify. So I'd have to put in one apostrophe, um, one quotation mark, basically, like one foot, one inch if I want that. Um, decimal degrees is fine. Everything else here is, oh, precision 1 16th, that's also fine for us. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, and I'm going to say yes. All right. So this is my drawing board. Um, you can see that grid in the back. You're able to snap to that grid if you want to. That's why that's there. Um, right here is the origin. That's 0, comma 0. So everything is defined in terms of x and y. Um, uh, this is really important. This is my command line. So the command line is where you can type in any um, anything you want it to do and it'll start. So if I'm typing, so I, let's say I want to make a line, I can type in line and hit enter. And then it'll give me directions in the, um, in the command line of what's next. So specify first point. So I can, let's say I want my first point to be right at zero, zero, zero. I have a couple ways I can do that. Um, I can zoom in. And I can go over here, these are my different snaps, and I can turn on um, grid snap. So I, if I make that blue, that turns it on. And now it should snap, whoop, there you 
Hang on, what did I do? Okay, let's try that again. Line. Um, I should be able to snap it right to 0, 0, 0, and then specify next point. I can click over here and notice that it's trying to snap to that grid. You can kind of see how it's hopping from grid point to grid point. Um, the other thing I could do to get it started, I could type in line, and I can literally type in 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. So you can use coordinates to get that in. Um, let's say I want to make a box. Let's say I want to make a 2.5 inch by 2.5 inch box. So I would, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, I could type in all coordinates. So if my next point is going to be, um, let's see, x and y, what comes first? x, right? So if I do 2.5, inches comma zero and hit enter then that'll do it that'll get me that point um, then I would think in y right so y is going to be zero comma 2.5 enter um, then I could do zero comma negative 2.5 enter um, oops I messed it up I went I have to do negative 2.5 first so negative 2.5 comma zero enter um, and then I could click to here, finish the box. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it, which I use more often, is just typing in the distances. So I would type in line, or L is the shortcut. Specify the first point, and then I could just type in 2.5 apostrophe for inches, hit enter. Um, roll my mouse up, don't click anything, just type in 2.5 inches, hit enter. Roll over here, 2.5 inches, hit enter. And then roll down, 2.5 inches, hit enter. And that'll also get my box. Um, so those are the two main ways I do it. You can also eyeball it, but um, it's harder to be precise when you eyeball things. This area down here are all of your guides. They're very helpful. So I'm going to turn off grid snap because I think it's annoying. Um, this one just tells you if the drawing grid is on or off. So if I do that, that all those lines go away. I'm going to keep mine on. Um, this one is ortho, so ortho means that it only will go in 90 degrees. So if I'm getting my line tool again, you'll notice that it's allowing me to only draw in 90 degree modes. Um, sometimes that's really helpful. I'm going to turn that off for now as well. This is polar tracking, so that'll um, allow you to draw things at a specific angle. Isometric drafting, keep off, we're not going to use it. Um, show snapping references. So let's say I'm drawing my box again, so line. Um, and I'm not doing this one very precisely. I can also hold shift to get ortho mode, by the way. So I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to come up. I'm coming over. And then let's say I want to make sure that it snaps to this point. See that green box? That green box lets me know that it's actually hitting that point. Um, if I don't have this on and I come over here, um, I can try to eyeball it and get it close. And like from here, it looks like that's a closed line. But when you zoom in, you're going to notice that there's a gap there. So it's really important to use your snaps and to use your tracking. So let's try that again, line. Um, so and you see that green line? That tells me like if I'm exactly straight, so I know I'm exactly straight. I can hover over this and then come up to this point. This is sometimes a little bit dodgy, sometimes it doesn't work. But you see that green line that tells me that um, that's going to be exactly orthogonal in both directions. And then that box lets me know I'm hitting that line to snap it. And now that's a closed line. OK, so I think what else do we care about down here? I don't think we care about anything else down there. So we're going to leave that alone for now. Um, up here, you have um, these are all commands that you can just type in. So example, um, line, polyline is like multiple lines in a row circle so you could also just type in circle and it'll tell you what it wants so it wants a center point um, so I could put in my center point and then it wants the radius so I could either type in a radius or you see down here it has the little d for diameter if I click on that um, now I can specify the diameter so let's try that again so if I type in circle I'm giving the center point and automatically it's going to ask for radius so maybe my radius is 10 and it'll make my circle um, I could do that again, uh, type in circle, but if I do diameter, so type in D, enter, and then type in 10, um, you'll notice that it's half as big uh, because it's, only, it's going by the diameter instead of the radius there. Um, 
these so these are all ways to draw these are all modifies and we're going to get into those more as we are drafting um annotation we won't be using yet but that's like adding notes to your drawing adding dimensions to your drawing layers layers are important so in AutoCAD, layers are how you determine the line weight of something. So we talked about in lecture today um, how different architecture drawings use different conventions or different line weights, different line styles to indicate a different um, thing. So for example, if you're cutting through a wall, if your plan, which is drawn at four feet, so if that is actually cutting through a wall itself, that's going to be your thickest line. So let's say that's like a two point line you're going to want to put those lines on a different layer than you're going to want to put something that's just a door in elevation or something you're not cutting through. Um, you'll want a different layer that can be dotted lines, for example, for things that are um, hidden. So we'll work with that a little bit. Um, blocks, blocks are a bunch of drawings that are already put together for you. Um, we might work with that for doors. Maybe we'll make a block for that, but for right now we're probably not gonna work with that too much. Um, properties um, we're not going to work with at the moment. Okay, so first thing we want to do here, we have our unit set up, is to bring in our reference image. So to do that, I'm going to type attach, and that's going to bring open this browser in, um, file. So I'm going to mine save to my desktop, wherever you saved your tutorial files, navigate to that, and find the floor plan, and hit open. Um, this is all fine for right now, hit OK. It's going to ask you for an insertion point. Wherever you want to insert it, go ahead. And for now, just make it maybe yay big, and we're going to scale it. Um, so when this image comes in, when I put it in, it doesn't know what size it is yet. We need to tell it what size it is. Um, in real life, you would go to the site, and you would measure and figure out um, maybe like the overall width here. You could get the width of it, and you could use that to scale it. Um, you might find like a wall thickness. Um, but in this case, we are going to use an existing door. Doors are usually three feet, so that's usually a decent tell um, if they're like a good ADA door. So, for example, this little door on the restroom, that looks tiny. That doesn't even look accurate. I hope that's not accurate. Um, so I don't think that one's good, but this one looks like it would be probably a decent three-foot door. Um, so we'll go ahead, either that one or this front door, but that's storefront, which can be different. So let's use this door as our three foot door to scale. Um, there are other ways to scale as well um, that we can talk about another time. I don't wanna overload you guys with information. Um, so to start out with, I think I want this facing the other way. So I'm gonna rotate the whole thing, type in rotate, hit enter, specify base points, just take the corner, and then you're just going to rotate around, hold shift so that it stays 90 degrees. And then you're going to type M enter to move it. And you can move this to 0, 0, 0, enter. Oh, did I do relative? Yeah, I used relative. Okay, so let's try that again. So I'm going to take this, move, um, specify base point. Um, so in the past, you could just type in 0, 0, 0, hit enter, and that would move it. But that looks like it's um, not, do it looks like it doesn't do absolute anymore. It used to do absolute and relative, sorry about that. So I'm just going to take this, turn on my grid snaps, um, and then come over to the origin, and I'll just place it on there. Okay, cool. Um, I don't want this moving around while I'm working. So I want to lock this entire layer. Well, actually, I have to scale it first. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I need to scale it, right? That's what we're doing. So first, I'm going to do a line and then um, offset it three feet and then scale it to be the same, the door to be the same size as that line. So I'm going to type in L. I'm going to change this color here so that we can see a little better. Okay, L, enter. Draw your line straight down. Hold shift to make it straight. Click. All right, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hit O for offset, and then it's gonna ask me to specify an offset distance, type in three apostrophe for three feet, hit enter, and then um, click on one side of it to get that finished. That's three feet, so we want our door to be that wide. So I'm going to take my image here, and there's that door, is that the right door I'm scaling? That one's good. Uh, oh, it's already on it, this one. So I'm going to move this 
best I can tell, I'm going to turn off my grid mode here to here. Oh, so undo. What happened there is that I never went through and fixed my snaps. So over here under snaps, if you hit that little arrow, you can see that there's all these different things it can snap to. Right now, I just have it going to endpoints. The problem with that is then it's going to always try to move things to the end of a line. So I want more of these selected. I usually have almost everything except the centers on. The centers can get annoying. Node, quadrant, um, perpendicular, tangent, nearest, um, parallel. Okay, so now that I have multiples of these on, it'll allow me to snap the things that are close rather than just to endpoints. All right, so this will still work with it being there though, it doesn't really matter. So I'm now going to scale this so that this opening is as big as that. So I select it, I type in scale. I'm gonna specify my base point that's going to be right here at the beginning of the door. And then down here, it says I can do a copy or a reference. I wanna do reference, I'm gonna type in R, enter. And my reference length is going to be from here, click. And then over to the end of here, click. And then I want my second one, value must be positive and non-zero. Man guys, sorry, I'm getting all the problems today. Let's try that again. Um, so I select this, type in scale. So I'm going to click, and then I'm going to type in R for reference, and then I'm going to go from here over to here, and then I'm going to finish off at this endpoint. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's now three feet. Um, so let me just check and see if that seems like a reasonable size for this building. So I can check distance by typing in, um, I'm gonna turn on my ortho a second, by turning on D-I-S-T. And so I'm going to say, what's the distance between here and here? That's like 24 feet, it says down here. Um, so if you think about it, that would be like each of those buildings is um, 12 feet each. That's, that's a little narrow, but that right might be right. Let me see what the outside is. So D-I-S-T, going from here, over to here, 26 feet. Okay, so if I look back at my um, at my thing here, you'll notice that this is actually two addresses. It's those two little um, townhouses or row houses, and those do look like very narrow townhouses. So I could believe that each of those is 12 feet. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. The other thing you can think about is, um, so 26 divided by, six, right? So 26 divided by six. So that means that each of these windows um, is like around four, a little over four feet, um, which also looks about right. Like this looks like it's about four feet. So I think 26 is a good, um, is a good distance. So I think we scaled that correctly. Okay, now that I'm happy with how this is scaled, um, I'm going to go and lock this layer, but I need a new layer to draw in before I lock this. So I'm going to go to layer properties here. Um, and this is going to allow me to add some layers and lock some others. So this is my zero layer. I'm going to lock that layer. So now this won't move on me. I'm then going to make a new layer and call this one wall thickness or um, wall cut. I'm going to make a new layer and call this one glass. I'm going to make a new layer and call this one storefront. And what else do we have in here? We have doors and door swings um, and interior walls. Interior walls. Oops, I made a sub layer there instead. Control Z. Ugh, start again. Okay, so wall. Exterior wall, interior wall, glass, storefront, um, instead of writing door, I'm going to put in projection line. That means it's like any kind of detail line that I'm not cutting through that I can just see. Projection, and what else do we want? Uh, door swing. 
So um, I'm going to make each of these a different color. AutoCAD, um, you see line thickness and color, which is very weird to people who aren't used to AutoCAD. So um, the computer is defining that red is going to be a certain thickness versus yellow is going to be a certain thickness versus green is going to be a certain thickness. And every office you work for will have a different um, setup of pens that already establishes that. For our purposes, we're just going to make it up. So um, the zero layer, I'm going to change it to a gray just so it kind of goes away a little bit. Um, for our exterior walls, I'm going to leave those red. Our interior walls, um, I'm going to make yellow. Um, my projection lines as well, I'm going to make yellow. My glass, um, I'm going to make blue. Um, my storefront, I'm going to make maybe green. Um, and then my door swings, I'm going to make um, fuchsia. Okay, so each of those colors represents a different thickness. Exterior walls will be the thickest. So I can change how thick they are over here under line weight. So I'm going to change my line weight for those to be um, maybe 1.5. Is that huge? That's a little bit huge. We'll do 1.2. Hit OK. Um, my interior walls, I'm going to bump those up to be 1. 1.7. So 1.2, 0.7. The glass can be much thinner. Let's make that 0.3. Um, the storefront, we're going to make the same width as this, so 0.7. My projection lines, um, I'm going to make 0.7. Or maybe 0.5. We'll make those 0.5. Um, actually, maybe this should also be 0.5. Sorry, guys, I change my mind sometimes. All right, and then door swing over here. Um, we're gonna make that very thin, so that's going to be 0.2. The other thing about the door swing is I want it dotted because it's not something that's always there. Um, so I'm going to change the line type over here from continuous. So if I hit, the, I have to load a line type. Okay, so I have to load one, and then that gives me all these options. Um, and I wanna pick a dashed line. So I'm gonna do dashed two, hit okay. Okay, and so now that's gonna be a dashed line. Great, so now I have all those layers. And just to test it out, um, let's try drawing lines with a couple layers. So I'm going to go over here, hit on my door swing line. So now I'm in that layer, get a line, draw it out. Okay, so if I zoom in, you see it's dotted. Um, I'm now going to do my exterior wall line. Oops, L for line, click, click. Um, so you'll notice that it doesn't look any thicker. So I only know it's thicker because of the color. I only know it's thicker because I've already set that up, but you won't actually notice it's thicker on the drawing. Okay, um, cool. So let's start drafting, yeah? Did we already lock that one layer? Layer zero needs to be locked. Great, so now it won't move around on us. To start out with, I'm going to do the whole exterior of this wall as one long line. Um, so I'm going to hit polyline, or you can type in polyline. Make sure you're set to exterior wall in your layers. Come over here, click, and then you're just going to follow the outside of this wall. Um, don't stop for doors or anything yet. So I'm going to um, estimate a little bit rather than type, rather than just click because I think these should be pretty even numbers. So here I'm gonna type in 66 feet, six inches, hit enter, come over here. This looks like it is about two feet, one inch. And I'm rounding out a little bit just because I don't think, um, I want like nice whole numbers. I don't think this drawing that we're working from is super, super accurate anyway. So um, we're rounded to the closest. So 14 feet, um, two inches. Coming over here, 21 feet, two inches. That looks like it's a little bit off, um, but it's fine for what we're doing. Okay, so then this looks like it's gonna be five foot, 1.5 inches. Coming to here is gonna be four foot, 10 inches. 
And then this can, if you want to fast forward through me doing this, this is, it's going to be a little bit tedious. Um, but this is, this is part of drafting. Okay, so nine and a half inches. Oops, I didn't type that right. So if you want to do nine and a half, you need to put a little dash in between nine and the one half. Okay. Um, this wall, I would think, would line up with that wall. Oh, nope, it doesn't quite. So this is where it would line up. See where that green is? But it looks like this wall actually extends a little farther. Um, so we're going to do four foot, five foot there. These buildings, um, historic buildings, are always a little bit kooky. So this is going to be 51 feet, um, 2 inches, 2 foot 8. And then this one I want to line up with that one. So I'm going to hover over the line over there. And that should, that little green line tells me when they're aligned. But I just lost it. So I'm going to come back over here. Okay, great. And then hit spacebar to finish. So because we did that as a polyline, when I select it, the whole thing should select. I'm now going to offset it to get the interior of that wall. So I want to know how thick this is. So I'm going to type in DIST. And from here to here... Looks like it is 10 and an eighth inches. We're gonna, um, hmm, it's always like hard to tell when the, something is raster, like how fuzzy it is. So is it 10 and a half or is it 10? It looks like it's 10. So we're gonna select this whole thing, type in offset, and then type in 10 inches, hit enter, and offset it to the inside. And that'll give us the whole interior of that wall. I wanna finish off my walls by connecting them and closing them. So I'm gonna type in L. Um, line and I'm going to do first close this and then close the one over here great and then I'm going to select everything and join it all right that's all joined um next I'm going to do my interior walls and this is going to be very similar so I'm going to change my interior wall over here and then I'm going to start tracing around um I'm going to be a little bit less careful here. I just want to get the basic idea down. I'm not going to worry about my whole dimensions as much. If I were doing this as a real project, I would actually do what I just did there and kind of look and estimate and um, round things off. But in the interest of saving some time, um, and it looks like here this offset came like way too far over. So actually let's fix that first. I'm going to go back to my exterior wall here. I'm going to type in a new line here. I'm going to fix that. Then I'm going to offset this 10 inches to there. Okay, so now that I have these new lines, I want to tell the computer that I want to follow these lines and not those lines. So I'm going to select all of this and type in um, trim. And then it says select object to trim. So I'm going to trim off this. And I'm going to trim off this. And I'm going to trim here. And I'm going to trim here. Um, and so now I have this, these new lines that I want to connect to my old outlines. I'm going to um, join all that. Okay, now this should again be all one thing. Yep, so that was trimming. All right, uh, so here we go. Changing this to interior wall. Use your polyline or type in polyline. And I'm just going to estimate here. I'm basically just tracing. So to here, to here, to here. Um, I'm now going to offset that. Let's see how far it is. D-I-S-T for distance. Click. Click. That looks like it's a six inch wall. So I'm going to select these. Offset. And offset six inches. And do to all one side. Um, it looks like the wall is thicker here than over there. Like that's way too thick. So, so we're going to use that trim and extend thing again. So let's see how thick this wall is. So from here to here, that's only four and a half. So I'm going to select this offset uh, 4.5 inches and then offset it again. Okay. Um, so where that change is happening is right here. So I'm going to draw a line across here. Oops, and I messed that up, so I'm just going to redo that. I'll make sure you wait for that green green box to help you there. Okay, 
And actually, so I'm noticing that it's really hard to see my lines um, and I want to make it a little easier on myself. So I'm going to go back over here, unlock this um, layer zero. I'm going to select this. And if I go here, I can fade out that image. So that makes my lines stand out much more and it gets a lot easier to see. Um, so once that's set, I'm going to go ahead and lock the zero layer again. Okay, zooming into here. So I just want this part. So I'm going to trim off the rest of that. Do I have all that? Okay, so I'm going to select all of this, type in trim, and then I'm trimming off this part. I'm trimming off, what else am I trimming off? I don't, I want the thicker wall here, right? So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, trimming, trimming. I for, didn't get that line in there, so we're going to do that. Select this, type in trim, and then I'm going to trim off this little part. Why are you not letting me trim that? Oh, because it doesn't intersect. That's a line in itself. Um, where do I want to switch to the thick wall here? It looks like it's still thin there, actually. So I think I want to switch to the thick wall here. So I'm going to put in a line right here. Use this to trim off this. Okay, so now that's all correct. And then what's going on over here? This I didn't do right. Um, so we're going to type in extend. That's going to extend the, this line to this point. So I'm selecting what it's extending to. So that's here. Hit enter. Then select that to extend it. Okay, and then TR for trim. You're hitting enter for every command. All right. Delete that. Um... This is looking okay. This line needs to go, but it has to get trimmed here. So I'm going to select this, TR, trim, trim out that. Um, all right, and then last things to trim. Actually, that's just a line, so I can just delete that. And then this side, I need to trim off this little piece. So I'm going to select this, TR for trim, trim off that. Whew, okay, gotten our first interior wall. Um, so rest of our interior walls. I'm guessing the bathroom are all six inches. That's how we'll usually bathroom walls are a little bit thicker because they have pipes in them. So I'm going to do another polyline. And I'm going to trace the exterior of that wall to here, to here. I want this to align, so I'm going to get that to get my line there. Okay, then I'm going to select this offset, um, four or six inches. Okay, and then to connect those all up, I'm going to select this, trim out where it's connected so it doesn't look funky. Okay, awesome. Um, I have, this is actually a wall with a wall opening here. Um, we're just going to draw it as its own little wall though. So coming across, offset this 4.5 inches, that side, line here. Then we're going to trim here to get rid of that. Join this. Um, I'm missing that one line where it connects to the exterior wall. I'm going to do that because that way we can hatch it later and that'll make sense later. Okay, so those are all together. Um, how many more exterior walls we got? Not too many. These interior walls, these, these, that. All right, let's go. Let's do it. So polyline. Um, and actually here I'm going to do this as a line first instead. So we're going to do this as a whole line, and then I'm going to do this as a line. I'm going to offset each of these 4.5 inches. Okay, I'm going to trim where they connect. Great. Um, and I'm going to close them off. At, ah, no. Okay. Oh, quick and note about selecting. So. Let's say I have this line. If I select this way, only if it's entirely surrounded by my box. So if you click at the left, let go of your mouse, and just move your mouse over. If you hold and drag, you're going to get this wacky thing, which I hate. So click, just move your mouse over until it's highlighted. So it only selects if it's entirely encased by the box. If I do it from the right over, so if I click, roll my mouse over this way, anything I intersect will be selected. Okay, so deleting that. Uh, line here, close this up. 
Um, and you can hold, you, if you just, you don't even have to hold shift. If you just select multiple things, they'll select all at the same time. Join those up. Um, up here, we have a trim to do, TR, enter, trim out that middle part. Over here, we need a new line, L, enter, click, click, select that, select that, and join. Okay, uh, two walls to go here, and then we have the front storefront to deal with. So for this, I'm going to draw this as one long line, offset it. I think it's still 4.5, yep. I'm going to do line here, line here. Line here, line here. Um, I want to trim out this opening here, so I'm going to select all this, type in TR, enter, and then join all these. Select them all, J, enter. Okay. Um, make sure you save. I have not saved yet. That is a tragedy. So save. Um, desktop. Um, give this a name you can find. So this is going to be Zay AutoCAD Tutorial 1. Cool. Save. All right. So next, let's deal with the storefront over here. So this storefront is actually not right in the plans that they gave us. Great. Like, if I go back to that image... And if you look at it, um, oh, I didn't even see it on here. I saw it on Google Maps. Like if you look, this corner is 90 degrees. These corners are angled. And that corner, I think, is still 90. So it's just these two middle ones around the door that are angled. Everything else should still be at 90. Um, so we need to draw that correctly as opposed to how it's drawn in there. So I'm going to do it first with just my glass line. Um, so I'm going to go over here, change to glass, um, and I'm going to come straight out um, to here, come over, and then I'm going to turn ortho off so I can draw this angle. Let's say it looks like it's like 55 degrees, um, and hit enter. I'm going to do another line here that's going to be my door thickness, um, which looks like it comes through all the way to here. And then I know it's going to be, oh, sorry, I didn't explain this. So I want to uh, mirror this over to the other side so that they're at the same angle. So I'm going to find the midpoint of this line. If I type in L, enter, and just hover over the middle, as long as under my snaps, so snaps on, as long as under my snaps I have midpoint on, it should make a little triangle when I hit the midpoint. So I'm going to click, draw a line down from there. Then I'm going to select this angled line, type in mirror, hit enter. And then it's going to ask me for the first point of my mirror line that's here. Second point of my mirror line is the ends of here. Um, erase source objects, no. Okay, and there is my line. So that should already be correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish making my um, glass over here. So I want it to come all the way to here and then to there. Okay, so that's my glass storefront. Um, I want to give the glass a little thickness. Let's pretend it's like one inch thick. So I'm going to select all that and um, join it first. Oops, sorry. Uh, is that all selected? I'm missing this little piece, join. So join and then I'm going to take it and offset um, one inch. So it's thick for glass, but it's good for a drawing. When things are less than an inch apart, they get really hard to see. They just look like one line. Okay, um, so it's great I have my glass in, but I also need the actual storefront. Um, so that's going to be like the, the bottom rail of it. Like if you think of a piece of glass, it ends, or like if I look at this thing, um, like this, basically this piece here, like that underwall you're going to see. So we're going to see the cut of the glass, you're going to see that underwall, and you're going to see these posts going through. So, oh my goodness, where is it? Okay, so I first I want to create that kind of underwall. Um, so I'm going to switch my layers here. I'm going to go to projection, and um, I'm going to offset one inch, figuring that the, overwall, the underwall maybe comes an inch outside of this glass, um, and then we're going to take the whole thing and set it in six inches in. So type in offset. 
and offset distance is going to be one inch and then select this to offset and go to the outside. Um, it looks like it put it on the layer projection because that's what it was already on. So just to change it, if I select it and go to projection, then that should work. Um, then I'm going to select this whole thing, type in offset, and I'm going to pretend it's a six inch thickness for this system, and I'm going to come off to the inside. Okay. Um, I need to finish off this. So I don't know if the, maybe the six inches is overkill. Let's try four. So offset, four inches, select that yellow line. Okay, yeah, that looks a little bit better. Um, so here, I think I actually wanna bring this just like straight across to here. So I'm gonna do L for line, line, and close that up. And then same thing over here. Oh, so far away. Okay, line, close that up. The relationship of this to the exterior wall isn't the same on both sides, and I want it to be. I think that really like this storefront should end where the brick ends. So if I select um, all of this, I think I can do something called stretch. I haven't really used stretch a lot though. That could be a disaster. We're gonna do it anyway. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do it anyway. Okay. So, um, I can just kind of move them. That's really what stretch is. You just kind of move them over. You want to make sure to use your things so that they're straight. Um, same thing here. Can I mul select multiple and stretch though? Like, could I select stretch both things at once? I don't think so. But I'm gonna move that over one inch. not let me do it by yeah well hang on so it should be one inch okay oh but I didn't do okay start again so select this one select that center line and come over one inch same thing here select the blue line get that center line come over one inch okay um that looks a little bit better already okay same thing over here so I'm going to select this first line and bring it over. And let's just see what this distance is that we're moving instead of estimating. So DIST, yep, so it's just one inch. Okay, so I'm gonna move this one. I'm gonna put ortho on so I don't mess things up. One inch. I'm gonna select this line, get my little stretch bar, one inch. And then this one, get my little stretch bar, one inch. All right, um, this line is too long now, so I'm gonna trim it here. Okay, so here's my storefront. Um, last thing I need to do to add to my storefront, um, a couple things. I need to add in the doors and I need to add in the structures. So let's see how often those structures really happen because I don't think what's on here is accurate. If I look back at my image, um, it looks like we have a vertical at these corners and then this is split into four, one, two, three, four. Um, okay. So, ah, where am I? Where is it? It's here. Okay, great. So to start out with, I'm going to make my, um, my mullion. Um, so let's say my mullion is going to be, um, even with this, it's going to come back like two inches, three inches, three inches, over two inches, and back. Okay, so here's my mullion. Um, I could go and add more detail into this. Like maybe I want to show that the glass moves into it. So I'm going to come back like a quarter inch down to here, down to here. Um, trim that out. Join. Trim. Ah! Trim out that little yellow part. Um, I could show that on both sides. So I could select this mirror. Mirror it over to the other side. And then I could trim out this area. Okay, so then maybe like this is what I'm going to use as representation. Um, I'm going to join this whole thing. So that I don't have to redraw it each time. I'm going to make this a block. So if I select this and type in block, 
Um, I'm going to give this a name and the name is going to be Mullion. Um, okay, and the base point, I'm going to specify on screen and hit OK. I want my base point to be right at the front. Um, well, yeah, I want it to be at the front center of this. I'm a little bit hesitant because like, I think this one only works for the middle pieces, right? It doesn't work well for end pieces, but okay. So I'm going to select there and hit enter. Um, blah, 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 all this is fine. Um, the name went away. And hit OK. Oh, select objects. Sorry, just select the objects. Hit enter. Um, OK. And then it wants the base insertion point. Click. Hit enter. OK, something's wrong here. So let's try again. It basically just restarted the command. So try again. Window, mullion. <sighs> OK. Select object, so I'm selecting my object. And then I should just be able to press enter. Okay. Redefine block. Oh, it's making a block within a block, I guess. Mm. I'm just gonna hit cancel. Maybe this already is a block. Okay. So the reason blocks are cool, sorry for all that drama. I think I've made the block already. So if I select this um, and I go to block editor, sorry, edit block, block edit. Hmm. So I don't always know the name of the commands. So if I click it and I can go down here and hit block editor, read only. Okay, so I just double clicked on it and that seemed to work. So edit block, so BD, B edit is actually the right thing to do. But if you just double click on there, um, I'm going to edit that, hit okay. And then I can add more information into here. So let's say I wanna add in um, an extra line, I don't know. I wanna add in this X. Um, and hit OK. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Let's say I want to add um, like two channel lines that go across here or something. And close block editor, save changes to the one. And now they notice they all have like that X and that center piece in them. Um, so it's nice because you can put something into substitute and then add more definition later. So all that said, um, this is going to be at one end here. The Well, the corner one's always a little bit different, so we'll come back to that. Um, I can rotate this. And then if I just want to, like, not deal with this, I can always hit explode, and it'll go back to just being lines. Oh, they're on a locked layer, haha. -ha. Okay. Okay, so let's say for the end one, I just want it to be like a regular, um, regular rectangle. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. And actually, I'm going to go back in and take those lines out because I think they're kind of annoying. Okay, so we discussed this is all one big piece. Um, so I actually, I need a corner one. So I think I'm just going to make this my corner one. Um, something's not quite right with this whole thing, right? I think that's what's happening. Like... I know there's a window there, but my mullion's so big or this projection's not enough. Um, so you're not getting, I don't have enough room to put that window in is what's happening. 
So I think I'm going to make this come this way. And I'll copy that to both sides. CO is copy. So we're going to copy this one over to here as well. Um, and then maybe I made this too beefy. But for the corner one, um, I'm just going to use this rectangle tool. So right now that's one inch by one inch. I'm just going to offset it a half inch. So offset one half inch. Okay, I still think that's not quite right, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. That's cool for right now. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm just going to get rid of this guy. Okay, I'm going to use this for the other corner as well. So copy. I'm going to copy that over. And like this is not super accurate. Um, in real life, you would go see what the system actually looks like, get information about it, and like get this looking a little bit more accurate over here. But right now, I'm just copying that over. Um, so these ones, I'm going to delete out the glass that's showing in the middle of them. So if I select them, so I'm just going to select all of those and type TR for trim, I can get rid of the glass in the middle. Okay, I have a couple more of these to do, so copy this. Uh-oh. Okay, and I want these on both corners, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this over to there. And um, this, I wish this were a little bit more accurate. So I'm gonna move it for a second. I know this should be one inch up, so I'm gonna take it, M enter, and then do one inch. And I know it should be one inch, or sorry, half an inch. So move it back half inch. And then same thing with this, it should be half an inch. So I'm gonna move it to here, and then move it over one half inch. All right, I'm gonna select it, trim out what's in the middle. Okay, this center part um, we discussed was split. So this is one, two, I think this was split into two, right? Let's see. Um, no, that's split into four. Okay, so that's split in four. So to get that even, um, I'm going to do a command called divide. So I have my glass here. If I select it and type in divide, um, I'm going to select my object to divide and select that and then I'm going to divide it into four segments. Um, and why did that not work? Divide, select object to divide, four, enter. Hmm. Okay, we have an issue here because I'm using Revit commands on um, AutoCAD is what's happening. Sorry, I don't use AutoCAD very often. Um, so to divide this into four, um, I thought I could divide it. If that's not the right command, then I need to Google it fast. Sorry, guys. So Chrome, divide a line in AutoCAD evenly. Click home, draw panel, point down, divide, select a line circle, 
a point is placed between each interval. That's what we did. That information was not helpful. Okay, so, hmm, what's going wrong then? Am I just not seeing the points? Oh, wait, what, uh, uh, there are points on that line. Okay, so they're just really tiny. That'll do it. So let's try that again. Sorry about that. So divide, select options divide, I select my line, and then I'm gonna split it into four points. Um, so if I go like this, I can now see where those lines are, and I'm going to put my, um, my mullion at each of those. So I'm going to grab my mullion from over here, um, and I'm gonna give it a midline, just so I know that I'm actually in the middle here. So I'm gonna copy it, CO, copy over, um, Uh, da, da, da. I'm going to copy that over to each of those points. So I should hit a point soon. Where's my point? First point is here. Second point is here. Third point is here. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and trim out the glass between those. So select, 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 and type in TR for trim. Get rid of the glass in between. Okay, so I'm getting really close. I have my storefront wall, I have uh, my interior walls, I have my exterior walls. Um, the last thing you need to put in are my doors. So for doors, um, doors are going to be generally three feet, might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less. So for each door, let's say I'm gonna look at this one. I'm going to get a line, so type in L, enter. Um, I'm going to bring it a little bit off that wall and I'm going to select here, offset three feet. Um, oh, that door is definitely smaller than three feet. So let's say that one is like two foot six, which is smaller than a handicapped door, but in historic buildings that often happens. So offset two foot six inches. All right, I'm going to select these. I'm going to trim out the wall in between them. Um, next thing I need to do is create a door. So I'm going to go to my um, projection to do my door. I'm going to gra grab a line. My line should come out. Um, I'm on my projection layer, right? Okay, line. So why is it red? Oh, hmm. So it looks like somehow this got turned to red. I want that to be by layer. Okay. So coming out here, I'm going to do it from the midpoint. Um, you wanted to come out the same amount as the width of the door, so I'm going to come out um, two foot six inches. Um, and then I'm going to make the door like uh, 1.75 inches thick. Come over to here. Okay, and I can join that all as my door. I'm going to put a line temporarily from here to the other jam. Um, then I'm going to draw a circle. So grab my circle tool. I'm going to start my circle here and I'm going to end it there. Um, that represents my door swing. To finish my door swing, I'm going to select these two, type in trim, and I'm going to select that exterior wall. Then I'm going to select this and I'm going to change this um, to be my door swing. Okay, so there's my first door. Um, if I have multiple doors that are the same size, I might want to make this a block. So I could select all of this and type in, oh, sorry, I probably don't want, this line could represent a threshold, so you might want to leave it, but I think I'm going to get rid of it. Um, the other thing you might want to add in if you're doing more detail is like the actual jams. Um, do we feel like adding that today? We're going to leave that out for right now, but generally you might also see like a little rectangle here and there basically representing the door jams. So I'm going to make this a block. So select it, type in block, and call this door, and hit OK. OK, so I'm going to take my block um, and copy it a few other places. Let's say this one's the same here. 
I'm going to mirror it. So type in MI for mirror. Mirror it over to that side. Um, and you can delete that one. And then I just need to move this over a tiny bit. Type in L for my lines. Um, and I get in the rest of those doors, so to there. And then this one. And I'm going to trim out the middle of that door. Okay, so the middle of that door is not trimmed out, so I have those two doors in. Uh, how many more doors do I have? I have a door over here, a door over there, a door over there. Okay. So I'm going to copy this door to here. I'm going to make this door bigger because that one's way too small. Door here. Uh, door here. Door here. And door here. Um, some of these are obviously going to be a different size, so we need to make a new one. So I'm going to explode this. Um, and can I just scale the whole thing? Maybe. So I'm going to do L for line. Have this come over. So copy this over three feet. I'm then going to select all that stuff. Type in scale. Specify my base points here. Um, I'm going to type in R for reference. And I'm going to say from here to here, I want to be three feet instead. Um, so that scaled my whole door. Okay, I'm going to uh, take this and block it again. And this is going to be three foot door. And hit OK. Specify the base point is going to be right there. Okay, so I'm going to rotate this. What happened there? R O. Base points here. Uh, rotate. Base point. Okay, sometimes you'd be careful about clicking too fast. I'm going to move this over to where the door is. Awesome. Um, this one looks like it actually, they're showing it the, um, the door jam being right up against the wall, which can happen. So I'm just going to draw it here and trim the rest of this wall out. All right, um, this one, we gotta rotate. And move. And so you'll notice that right now, um, it's facing the wrong way, so I'm gonna mirror it. Make sure you hit no at the end of the mirror, otherwise it undoes what you just did. Okay, I'm gonna move this over to uh, here. Draw in my two lines to trim out the door. And trim out the door here. Move this down to the middle of the door. Okay, so I got that one in. Um, this one needs to move over, needs to mirror. This door actually looks like it might be a three foot door. So I'm gonna grab my other block and copy that over to here. Rotate it. Um, I need my lines to trim out this door. And this looks like it's like a weird size door, so I'm just going to explode it and scale it. So I'm going to move this to be right here. And that's not the most accurate thing because like my door thickness is going to be off, but um, I've decided I'm okay with that. So scale, reference from here to here is now going to end there. Nice. All right. Those are all done. Um, this one still needs to happen. That door looks like it's very similar to this one. So I'm just going to mirror this one and then mirror it again. Oh, that was wrong. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this over to here, and then I'm going to mirror it over this line. Never forget to, to hit the no button, otherwise it won't keep it. Okay. Um, I'm going to draw in my lines here. Okay, 
and then I'm going to move this door down a little bit. All right, so now this all looks pretty convincing. Um, just the front door needs doing. Um, the front door looks like it's going to be at a different angle. So I'm actually going to draw the front door on its own. Um, I'm going to, and no, remember like the glass door usually has a frame. So I'm actually going to draw part of that frame. So I'm going to bring this in, copy it. Same thing with this, I'm going to copy it. Um, I'm going to delete the glass in between. So I'm going to delete out that glass. And basically I'm saying like this thing is my door. And that might not be super accurate because it's really thin. But that's okay. It's good for what we're doing right now. So I'm going to select all those inner parts. And I'm going to block them. Actually, I'm just going to group them rather than block them. A group is just like it keeps it all in one piece so you don't have to move each part individually. So I'm going to group. Okay, um, and I'm going to take my whole group and I'm going to rotate it out. So I'm going to hit rotate, use this as my base point, and I'm going to turn off ortho and I'm going to come out 45 degrees. Um, so that's pretty good. And then I just need to add in my door swing. So to do that, I'm going to change to door swing. Get my circle on. I'm going to start my circle. Oh, this needs to move. Okay, so I'm going to get my door swing on, get my line here. It's going to go from here to there. And then I need to trim it so I can use this and this TR to trim this out. Okay, and there's my door swing. Um, I want to get rid of the wall that's showing here. So I'm going to use my projection line, just draw a line here and here. Extend. Ah, try again. So it's like this. Extend. Select this object. And there we go. Okay, then I can select this, select this, and type in trim to trim that in the middle. All right, so now we have like a fairly convincing plan. And I can un, um, uncheck this and delete out the image that was behind it for reference. And why is it not doing that? Because I didn't fully unlock it. There we go. All right, so there is my little plan. Um, I'm going to save. Last thing I want to do is make an elevation from this plan. So I'm going to go back to my zero layer. Um, and I'm going to give myself some reference lines. So these are like construction lines or guidelines. I can put an ortho here to make this easier. They don't need to be that long. That's ridiculous. Ah, delete. All right. So I grab my line. Um, and I'm just going to copy this over to everywhere that something happens around on the front. So this is happening here. Um, I have this happening. I have these happening. Here I have my door happening. This happening. So I'm just copying them all over. Copy, copy. Copy, copy. Okay, so what's so powerful about this is I already know um, a bunch of measurements in my drawing without having to measure anything. And now I'm going to do a baseline. This is my baseline. Um, I'm going to give myself a few vertical lines. So first one is door height is usually seven foot. So I'm going to offset this line seven feet. I'm going to figure that that's going to be about this top of my storefront. Um, let's take a look at what other heights we can garner. So if I go my elevation here. Um, it looks like there's a seven foot door, let's say, and then let's say that up above is maybe another foot. So let's say the whole storefront's eight foot. Um, and then we can kind of estimate um, this height off the bricks. So these look like, uh, so a regular modular brick is like four inches. I'm thinking these are more like three maybe. Um, 
but if we're saying this is eight foot, we can like divide it by the number of bricks and then figure out what that last bit is. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six. 37, 38, 39. So let's do 8. So we need to figure out how many inches 8 feet is. So 8 times 12 is 96. And we're going to divide that by 38 bricks. So each brick is actually only about 2.5 inches. So these are super narrow bricks. So I'm going to, um, it's 2.52. So I'm going to now multiply that by the number of bricks here to get this height. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So 2.52 times 23 is 58 inches divided by 12. Ah, 58 divided by 12. So that's 4.83333. So it's like 4 feet and then 0 0.83 times 12 is... Uh, 0.83 times 12. Um, so it's like 4 feet 10 inches. And that seems pretty believable. So again, like I'm estimating here, it might not be perfect, but I think that's believable enough. So going back to here, um, so the other heights we were going to do, so this was our 7 foot. We're going to do uh, an 8 foot. And then we're going to do... Um, and then we're also going to come up off of this another 4 foot 10 inches. Um, the last distance I wanted to do was um, where that storefront kind of ends and starts and ends. So if I look back at here, um, let's see how many bricks that is. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're going to do... 10 times 2.52, which is the width of the brick, that's 25.2 inches. Um, so we're going to say that's 26 inches. We're going to round it. So I'm going to take this, and it's going to be 26 inches. All right. So this is already giving me the outline of my storefront. Now I just have to actually go ahead and draw it. Um, in elevation, um, I'm going to use mostly projection lines because there's nothing I'm cutting through. So I'm going to use my, um, actually I might do a heavy, medium, and light line and just call my, um, and call everything that to make it simple. We'll do that at the end. For now, we're just drawing things as they are. Okay, sorry for all that thinking. Um, so storefront, I never used my storefront layer over here, did I? Well, we're going to use my storefront layer now. So, um, hmm, what do I want to start drawing? Let's draw on the storefront. So I'm going to use this rectangle tool and I'm just going to go over the lines that I already have. So I know that um, this bottom piece here, oh no, okay here we go. So I know that this, actually I can bring this image up next to what we're doing so you can see kind of like what I'm looking at as I go. That will be better. So I'm going to type in attach. And I'm going to find the front image and open that up. Okay, I can put that right here. And really, like, in an ideal world, if this picture were taken directly on, um, we're going to fade this image out. Um, background transparency. How do I move it to the back? Draw order, send it back. Okay. So in an ideal world, I should be able to kind of get this lined up and it'll tell me like what's happening where. So if I scale this again, specify my base point is here, type in R for reference, go from here to here, and then move that all the way to there. And look, that's pretty close, right? We didn't do so bad on this. Um, 
So that'll kind of help me draw this at the same time. So going to my storefront here, I'm just going to use my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw in um, this piece of storefront and then I'm going to draw in this little line, which is like that piece going backwards. This other piece going backwards, draw in this piece. Um, this piece is a long piece that's going to go all the way to here and then that little piece that goes backwards. Um, uh, what did I mess up there? Oh, hmm, this is actually not a little piece that's the wall itself. So I'm going to stretch this to there. So that little piece going backwards is really small. Delete that. Okay, so let's make that on a different layer. Um, I'm going to make that on my exterior wall layer. And that'll go... Um, I mean, it looks like this really bubbles in front of that. So I think this is not entirely accurate again, which is always like the issue we come back to, how accurate is the drawing. Um, but we're just going to pretend that that's like the sidewall and draw that going up. So let's pretend that this is more like, um, more like this coming up to this point. And we'll do that over here as well. Okay, awesome. Um, and then this big part, I'm going to draw all at once. I'm going to do that on the same layer as that, all the way to here. Um, and then what else we have? We have our doors to put in. Um, this door looks really wide to me. Something's not right. Oh, I'm drawing this all at the wrong spot. That'll do it. Um, so all of these things, Okay, let's get in some dimensions because I'm like confused about where I am right now. Sorry guys. So if I do from here to here, um, let's just check. So from here to here is what? So that was our, that's two foot, two inches. So that's our 26 inches. Where's our, is this our door height? That's our eight foot. So that's the top of the storefront. That's right. That's our door. That's all correct. So what's wrong then? Is this door just super wide? No, four foot, yeah, it is, four foot nine. Oh, our storefront door is huge. Okay, cool. I don't think that's true, but um, sometimes the plan you work with is not super accurate. Um, and we're just gonna go with it. So I'm gonna get my storefront door again. Um, and I'm gonna get my rectangle tool and here, I'm going to draw in that door coming to here um, and then I'm going to also put like the little transom over it which is here um, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw in so it all they all are um, meeting up here at a point so I'm going to bring this down come down two inches and then bring that over that's like the top of the storefront and then I can use my rectangle tool again to put in the sides of the storefront in here. Oop. So rectangle, rectangle here, rectangle. That I messed up, that should be shorter, right? Uh, no, actually that's right, okay. Um, I can copy this over and just uh, stretch it. So if I select all these lines and join them, and I can select this copy over to here. And then I can stretch it. So if I select it, I can select that middle piece and I can stretch it all the way to the end of my storefront over here. Um, I need to copy in the rest of my mullions. So this mullion I made too high. I'm going to bring it down to here. I'm going to select it and copy it over. So copy wherever those mullions are hitting here. So yeah, what's nice about this, the elevation becomes much faster to make because I don't have to like re-measure anything. It's already all determined. Um, 
Okay, so I have in that storefront bit. The door itself has more detail than that. Um, I'm just going to offset this whole thing two inches to represent the frame of that door. And then this I'm also going to offset two inches to the interior to represent the transom. Um, this piece we already have represented. So I think we might actually be almost done. Um, I didn't want to put in the glass. So glass is going to be a rectangle that is pretty much already outlined in all of these. Um, but I'm just going to draw it in so you can actually see the blue line for it. And last piece of glass. Okay, and then um, up here we have an OG edge that we can draw in. Um, so we're just going to kind of trace that on. So I'm going to use my arc here. Um, I'm going to change my projection layer. And then for the arc, it wants the second point. Um, so I'm going to turn off ortho so I can actually like move a little bit. So let's say my second point is going to be here. And it's going to go to there and then I'm going to re I can edit it a little bit see that's like too wide so I can bring that in then I can do another arc which will be from here to here um, I can also smooth this out it's a little bit crazy looking so if I type in spline ah, spline um, a spline is basically like lets me make a wiggly line so I think I'm going to use that I think that'll work a little bit better and I can delete out these old ones. Um, so there's my OG edge. And then I'm just going to put in my line here. Put my ortho back on. And um, that little edge will be there. So that just describes that little crazy part that's happening there. Um, I can extend those lines all the way to the other side. So I'm going to find the midpoint of my building. I'm going to draw a line from here to here. Look for the triangle. Mirror this over, MI mirror from here to here. And then type in extend. Um, uh -huh, I didn't do my thing again. So select it, mirror from here to here and click no. Okay, now I'm going to type in extend. Um, I'm going to extend to this object and I'm going to extend these two lines. Okay, sweet. So now I'm going to delete out my guidelines that are there. Um, I'm going to delete this background image. And these guidelines are really, it's hard to see with them because they're so bright. So I'm going to make them a lot lighter um, just for visuals. So I'm going to change them to almost the same color as the background. And now you can start to see that here's our storefront with our ridiculously wide door because something's wrong with that plan. Um, and here's your first plan. So save that. And then um, for your upload, just upload this file to Canvas. Um, I'm sorry this was so ridiculously long. I know we didn't even get to drawing in the sidewalk. Um, but I think it's good that it'll give you some practice just drafting because drafting is... Um, Understanding things in 2D and drafting them is really core to drawing something in 3D digitally. Um, so thank you so much. Again, sorry that was forever, and I will see you in class. Thanks. Bye.